All right, and we are back here on the GSMC Football Podcast. And for the second part of the show, we are going to talk about Matthew Judon being traded from the Patriots to the Falcons. And kind of a surprising move. I know that there was uh, some stuff going on with Matthew Judon looking for a new contract with the Patriots. And it looked like it got resolved, but that ended up not being the case, and he ends up going to the Falcons. And the one thing I'll say is, what was the big need that the Falcons needed to address in the draft? That was edge rusher. And that's why the Michael Penix pick got a lot of criticism was because, you know, the Falcons needed to get an impact player on the defensive side of the ball. And, you know, they still ended up addressing that position, but they didn't do it with their first pick. They took Michael Penix Jr. But now they ended up addressing it by getting Matthew Judon from the Patriots, who's arguably their best defensive player. And these are kind of his stats, you know, over the course of his career, played with the Ravens at the start of his career, was drafted in 2016, I believe. And, yeah, these are his total sack numbers, total tackles. He's been in four four Pro Bowls. Uh, Did miss some time last year due to injury. But he will really help out this Falcons defense. And I was looking at the sack totals from last year. So they had 42 sacks. So they were 21st in the NFL in sacks. Now, you bring Matthew Judon in, and that should definitely tick up a little bit. Um, and they were one behind the Eagles, who, again, I, I know I've talked about you know the Eagles' defense and the moves that they made this offseason, but what a difference you know from the previous year when they had you know four double-digit sack players. But, yeah, so the Falcons are hoping with this move that you know this is going to elevate their pass rush. And, you know, you pair him up with Grady Jarrett. You know, you also had Jesse Bates, who you brought in a couple years ago now, or you brought in last year. Um, You know, A.J. Terrell, their corner. So they're hoping that, you know, Matthew Judon can come in and really be a difference maker, which I think he will be. Because last year he only played in, I think he only played in 11 games. He had four sacks last year, 10 solo tackles. No, I... I am completely wrong on that. He played in four games last year. He really didn't play. But he had four sacks, four sacks in four games, 13 total tackles, 10 solo tackles, three assists. I don't know why I, th- I don't know why I thought he, he played in 10 games. But, yeah, he only played in four games last year. But, yeah, they're hoping for numbers from the previous season when he played in all 17 games, 60 total tackles, 15 and a half sacks. So that's what they're getting in this pass rush. Um, Falcons are looking good. Falcons are looking good. They are really building something over there. And really it all comes down to the quarterback play, of course. I think in a lot of ways, because if Kirk Cousins plays like how he did before the injury last year, I mean, this team is going to be, this team is going to be good. And I, I think you really have to look at this team as the favorites in the NFC South. You know, I've, I've been saying that all along, and I'll continue to say it. I, I think this move really does help them on that side of the ball because that defense, you know, was lacking in some areas, but they, you know, really, th- th- this move really helps them out. And I, I just think, you know, this division is, you know, one of the weaker divisions. So even if they didn't get Matthew Judon, I mean, I still think that they are the favorites to win. The division but this really th- this is a needle mover you want to talk about a needle mover this is definitely a needle mover getting this guy and like i said you want to see him perform to how he did in 2022 as opposed to last year when he was you know he only played in four games i don't know why again i don't know why i said 10 but yeah only played in four games last year and um so they traded him the patriots traded him in exchange for a 2025 third round pick and he was set to make 6.5 million dollars in the final year of his current deal and you know of course there was that heated exchange that he had with Gerard Mayo but it seemed like things got resolved but I guess you know they did not because he ended up getting traded and yeah he he was out 
He only played four games last year due to a bicep tear. Um, but yeah, did end up with four sacks last year. And the Patriots have, now on the Patriots side, they have nearly $45 million in cap space and have signed multiple players, uh, including Kyle Duggar, Jabril Peppers, Ramondre Stevenson. Those guys got deals this offseason, but they didn't extend Judon, which is kind of curious. Uh, I mean, I think they were trying to, but I, I guess they just really could not um, come to an agreement, and that's why he's gone. But definitely, you know, I, I, I'm sure Patriot fans are not very happy that this ended up happening because we'll get into them a little bit later in the show when we preview the preseason game tonight between the Eagles and the Patriots. But, you know, that's one of your one of your better players and you're moving off of him. You know, and, and this is kind of a, uh, you know, a reset year for the Patriots. But, you know, you still want to have some talent on this team and i guess they kind of figured that you know they're just going to move off of judon because they just really could not get to an agreement um but it's kind of funny how we get this trade but we still are waiting on you know brandon Ayuk and what's going on there because like i said yesterday there's a deal in place but nothing has happened so um now, with Judon, I know I said this is a needle mover for the Falcons. Does Do I put them ahead of any of the other teams that I, you know, ranked ahead of them? No. I mean, they're still kind of in the same spot. But this does make them a better team. It does. Because, once again, that side of the ball was lacking. You know, they were in the 20s when it comes to sacks last year in terms of overall rankings. But... You know, you had a guy that had 15 and a half sacks a couple of years ago. That's going to help. That's going to help out. It's going to make the other players on the defense better. So, um, this was a good move for the Falcons. And, yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, another, uh, another big move. And, and, you know, now I, I think them not addressing edge rusher in the draft, I think those – can go away that can all go away for them not addressing that their first pick because they ended up getting it in Matthew Judon now he's an older player but I think it's still a good move they address the position and I, I and I think some at least some of the criticisms could go away I mean you could still have an issue with them taking Michael Penix Jr. with that pick because you paid Kirk Cousins a boat ton of money to be your guy but you draft his replacement with your first selection in the top 10. So, right, the top 10? Well, the top 15. So, I it's, but I, I think at least some of it could go away. That's really my, uh, my thoughts on that. But, yeah, let me know what you guys think, though, about this move for the Falcons. How do you feel about it? I think it is a solid move for them. It strengthens the pass rush, strengthens, strengthens the defense in general. I think this is a good move for them. So before we go to break, I just want to remind you guys once again that we qualified for Super Chats. So if you want to tip or donate, help out the show, click the dollar sign in the chat menu on the video here. It makes the show more interactive between me and you guys, the viewers. Uh, it highlights your comment. I make sure to acknowledge it during the live broadcast. And it just makes the show better. And if you can't do that, you could always click on the link, which is gsmcpodcast.net. But that ends up taking you to another site. It's much easier to just, just do it here with the Super Chat feature and be able to stay with the broadcast as opposed to going to another site. So... If you want to do that, we greatly appreciate it. We appreciate you guys viewing our shows day in and day out. So, yeah, just wanted to remind you guys about that. And when we come back from our second break of the show, uh, we will talk about Hard Knocks. We'll talk about Episode 2. We'll talk about Caleb Williams' debut because I know I, I talked about it a little bit yesterday. I kind of just ran through a bunch of the games 
because there were you know we, we had a full slate over the weekend um but i did watch episode two uh late last night um you know i really wanted to focus on you know obviously the preseason game against the buffalo bills uh there were some other things that they uh they covered but um I, yeah i obviously my main focus was i, I want to focus on the the preseason uh debut of caleb williams because you know that's something that you know we're, we were all anticipating and um you know he looked good but we'll, we'll get into all that when we come back from break but also i did want to bring up another thing too is that mark andrews of the baltimore ravens uh was involved in a car accident and um he is okay though after the accident but um you know just scary stuff uh on that front uh john harbaugh said he's feeling good uh it was a pretty significant accident he said he came out of it with nothing at all not a scrap or not a scrape so that's good to hear but i know that was uh that was something that i saw you know looking for topics for the show today but yeah that just you know scary stuff there happy every everyone or happy that he's all right so um yeah i just wanted to bring that up as well i hope everybody involved in the crash is is, is all right so but i wanted to bring that up as well but um yeah so we're gonna take our second break of the show now and like i said when we come back we will talk more about caleb williams debut we'll talk about hard knocks the second episode of hard knocks with the bears so with that being said now stick around and we'll be right back here on the gsmc football podcast